welcome to number six video in the Miniature Heroes, Ra Heroes Rambling series of, of um, miniature related oddities and other bits and pieces and well whatever I can come up with. Shane and I are discussing plans for some sort of professional or in his case expert extravaganza but um, that is a little way in the future yet. We've got to get to um, work out the collaboration on that. Anyway, what I want to go back to on this video is something that I touched on in video number five and that is when you get a miniature you, you're not quite expected it's it's not complete you've got to have to assemble it basically I've had emails from people saying Mr Fitch my miniature is broken it's miscast why is the arm on the base we are confused please can you help so if you're watching this video and I have, I have directed you to it this is this is hopefully going to enlighten you and and help you on your way We'll cover how I prepare a miniature um, before I start painting, some of the things to look for in case you've never never done it before, and also the moulding process, which is how we end up really with an arm and the bow effectively stuck on the side of the base. We'll start first with the moulding process. When Bobby Jackson originally sculpted this miniature, he went for a dynamic pose ranger. And we've got it here. We've got his arm reaching back with his hand to his uh, stack of arrows and his quiver, so that's fine. Legs splayed apart. He's obviously seen something. He's crouching down. He's getting ready to fire down. And his arm should be stuck here, coming out at this sort of angle. And the bow bow would be down there. Now, that's, that's fine. That's no problem. When he sculpted it, probably in green stuff, it was no problem. The problems do arise with the moulding process. That really is the reason why the arm is stuck down here. Now, you have to... If you, there are certain, lots of videos on, on YouTube that you can find about um, centrifugal moulding. But basically, what happens is the master, the, the, the green stuff master of this, will be placed in a rubber mould. Like that. It will then have another piece of rubber placed on top of it. They are then pressed together and heated, and the imprint of this miniature will comes out on both parts, which is great. But unfortunately, because you are using a sandwich, you've only got a two-dimensional plane to get everything in. If you have things coming out in four dimensions, like a cross, for example, which this would sort of make when its arm's in the right position, it doesn't work. The rubber can't grip round this and what have you. It will just break and, and fall apart. Now, skilled mould makers, of course, know all this. And what they will do, and the sculptors as well, they will detach pieces that aren't going to work in the 2D plane and use them as separate castings. In video 5, we saw the Dark Sword Ranger had a separate casting bow and a few other bits and pieces, much finer than this one, but a separate casting bow. And that was for exactly the same reason. By the time, if they, they tried to cast it all together, it just wouldn't work. It would just, um, the whole thing would just be a mess. You wouldn't get anything at all. If you just stick to two-dimensional planes, I mean, this is, this is one of mine. Now this is a classic two-dimensional plane. As you see, everything basically can be got front to back along there. And that's no problem. He's not got anything sticking out this way. He's not got too much sticking out that way. That is just an ordinary straight two-dimensional plane cut miniature of one of my magic users, which has been inked, which I've got to get around to painting at some point. This one, though, his arm should come out here. And so he's breaking the two-dimensional plane. The mould maker, or Bobby Jackson, has either detached the arm and fixed it to the base so that it now works on the two-dimensional plane and it can be sandwiched within the rubber for, for easy casting. It does mean, however, that we have got to break this off and assemble it. And that's the next part we're going to go on to. Miniatures are great fun to paint, but actually putting them together and getting the model that you want is also a great part of the hobby. Um, if everything came pre-packed and just ready to roll, it, it takes a lot out of it. So 
the modelling and preparation part is something that you're going to have to devote some time to uh, in order to get good at it and also to, to know what to look for. Uh, let's see, right, back to casting process. The moulds are large round, round things, the figures are round the edge, the little casting holes in the middle and there's little channels that lead the lead off. Now when this the sandwich is all put together in the centrifugal mould, it's compressed, it's spun, molten metal is put in, it flows to the outside due to centrifugal force and the figure is formed and you'll get lots of these going around like that. These are then popped out and popped in blister packs and there you go, that is what you will get out of the packet. To help release these from the rubber mould, um, moulders do use a very fine talcum powder, they just dust it over, knock out the excess, um, and when these have been cast and they've cooled a bit, they pop them out, and it helps, helps release, it helps preserve the rubber, um, it does kill quite a few little bits and pieces. But it does mean that these come out, brand new miniature will come out with a residue of talcum powder on it. Now, that's not really great if you want to paint it, because talcum powder and paint don't work very well. Now, if I just wipe this a bit, you might be able to see. You probably won't. The way you get rid of that is very, very simple, and it's, it's recommended for all miniatures, whether you're dealing with plastics, whether you're dealing with resin, because they use a special release spray for resin, um, or certainly if you're dealing with metal, and that's if you just wash it. And so here I have cunningly prepared some little bit of washing up liquid in some water and, and drop it in. Uh, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple indeed. Um, old toothbrush. There you go. Fresh him out and just give him a little scrub. You probably won't see a great deal of difference, but what you are doing is degreasing the model. Other hands will have touched this. It could have been very hot where it was made. They might be sweaty. There's grease. I mean, you know, it's just general bits and pieces that get stuck onto the model. And so here we go. Just give Mason a quick old scrub. Oh, I've dropped him in again. All over. And then all you've got to do is dry him off. Wait till he's completely dry. And then we can have a look at stage two. There we go, wash his face. Da -da. Can't have dirty ranges, it's not good. Right, that'll be in the second part. See you bit. Right, Mason's had his bath. Um, you might see he's probably a little bit shiny, a little bit more silvery colour, but he is now nice and clean and dry. All the moulding residue, finger marks, grease, whatever, has now been removed. And this is a good... good state to sort of start what we're going to do for preparation. Um, the first thing is obviously his bow arm. Now we really need to, to get rid of that for the time being and it's dead easy. You can either break it off because um, it is weakened there. I prefer to snip an ordinary pair of just very tiny side cutters, leave a little bit of the pip on and that's all you do. Now as you can see, there's his arm, there's the pip and what have you. We'll leave that on because that might be useful to us in a bit. There's the socket where it's going to go. And yeah, that is literally that. Now we've got to check the thing for mould lines. Mould lines and flash are another consequence of the moulding process. Because the mould effectively sandwiches him in two like that, there is this slight line that goes across. A new mould is a very tight thing and the mould lines will be very very small to non-existent. As moulds age they deteriorate and the mould lines become more and more pronounced. That's it, get it right Fidge. Um, this causes a bit more of a clean-up problem um, for, for us miniature painters because the last thing you want to do, it, it doesn't look much, but you will, as soon as you paint it, you'll see the blessed mould lines and it it ruins it, it really does. Flash is where the gap, where the moulds meet, starts to widen. And so the molten metal goes round and it also starts to disappear, form a thin little sheet that comes off the miniature. There is a tiny, tiny piece of flash here, and I don't know if you can see it, but there, right on the base part. 
and that's you know it's negligible because we're just going to cut that off and get rid of it but that is also a fairly good indicator that the mold is getting towards its its sell by date and needs to be remade reaper remake their molds frequently i've never seen a very flashy cast of theirs occasionally um bits and pieces do come through from other manufacturers but most of them are very hot on this as soon as the mold starts to degrade they change it which is great for us but it does mean you've got to look a little bit careful carefully for the mold lines now sometimes the base will tell you and there's a bit of one now that's a bit of where the sandwich was actually put together so this was one half of the mold that was the other half and that's there so that gives us a bit of an idea there's another little bit there of where this mold line is going to appear so we can be fairly sure we're probably coming up this way now look there there is a tiny tiny piece of mold line there it doesn't look much it's it's well it's it's probably not even a tenth of a millimeter but you can see a little tiny bit of it on his cuff here again i don't know if you can see it but there is a tiny mold line down there that's going to need to be dealt with it's going to go across his hand hopefully we won't have to do too much to his hand or fiddle about too much because that is nicely molded and reaching back and you can see the fingers there so you didn't really do too much it probably then crosses down here this leg is something to look for again now as i look yes there's a tiny bit there coming through and a little tiny bit just on the side of his foot there it it really isn't very much but it's now that you've got to deal with it because if you don't as you paint it will become more noticeable these things always do also look for any rough edges and bits and pieces on the side plates here i mean this i would paint as a leather he's a ranger he's probably going to be in fairly drab woodland type colors so that he blends in um this has got a little tiny pip just there on the end now, i don't know if you can see that there i'll try and bring it up to the camera there we go that one's coming off that one i think is all right um it's just looking over the miniature and being very critical about what's going to happen and where look for where the mold line is going to be and just follow it through what will help you with this and what I found very helpful over the years is one of these. It's an, oh dear, this is not going to show very well, but it's an optivisor. There you go. And even if you've got good close-up vision, which I do have, I do have good close-up vision. I can't see, see distance for toffee, but these do make a big difference. Um, that is uh, a 1.8 magnification, and... I wear this all the time when I'm painting, cleaning up, anything. I, anything I do with miniatures now, I wear it. Never used to. Never used to. Always prided myself on the vision, but they do make a big difference. If you haven't got one, do look into getting one, because it does help. It helps you see the little bits and pieces. Now, here we go. This is the bow. We're going to have to clean this as well. The bows are generally pretty good, but you see this one bent. Now, you look at that. There's the top of the bow, there's the bottom. Well, he's never going to do nothing with that. The bow should be in a straight line. So, again, you just get a little pair of flat pliers. I mean, if you can get smooth jaw ones, all the better. But just grab it and start tweaking it about. So there we go. Give it a bend. There, he's bent. He's been doing it on the angle, so that can have a little bit more. And there we go. You tweak it back into roughly where you want it to be there you go you can line the jaws with um some sort of soft stuff you um all right um some plastic padding bits and pieces things like that but generally they're they're fairly fairly decent things to work with they're not um not too bad so we've got the bow looking more like it should we've got his hand there one of those fingers is a bit bit true but there we go we've still got this bit of pipit at the back and we probably don't need that now because that can come off because we'll do a test fit and there we go 
just roughly doing it. Now that is how that is going to come together. We might drop the bow down a bit more. It all depends. We might put a bit more curve in that bow, actually, because that's, that's a little bit... so that it looks like it's got a bit more spring, so it matches the other one. I have to say, the top of this is thicker than the bottom part, but that won't look so bad once we've got it all together. So, yeah, so that goes back in there. And so now you start to see how that wouldn't mould. There's just no way that they could do that for that to mould. There's too much of an overcut. Um, it just wouldn't work. So that's why it was clipped on there, like that. So, now, down to the cleanup. For this, you will need a nice, sharp, and I do emphasise on sharp, hobby knife. Blunt things won't cut toffee. Um, they do dull fairly quickly, but a sharp knife will do controlled cuts where you want them. You also need some files. I've got a couple here. I also sell a nice range of diamond files from Green Stuff World. These are quite nice. Um, and these. Now, these things um, were, were fairly new to me. Shane put me onto them, as he does most things. These are actually sanding sticks. And you can get these from Model Display Products down in Cardiff. They are um, online as well. I'll put a description link down in the doobry do but what it is it's abrasive in different um, different uh, grades that one's quite a coarse one these are quite fine that's quite fine and it's on a, on a little sort of I don't know squashy foamy core thing but what's really nice is that you can just carefully go over the miniature now you can see you can see the line hopefully that's catching up on the camera now I'm just gently going over, catching the line, and slowly filing it away. Be very gentle with what you do. If you have a fine mould line like this, don't suddenly think you're going to get your uh, file out of the garage and start doing things. Get yourself some proper kit. It doesn't cost much, and the results will be much better. And that's just basically all you do. You just see that, and gently and carefully polish it away till it's no more of a big line. Be careful, sometimes you've got tiny details, sometimes you've got things that you really want to keep hold of, um, and that makes life a lot harder, but that is really and truly all there is to it. Go over the miniature, find out where the mould lines are, see where they are, and give it a good clean. And that's, that's, that's it. Just do a little bit more here. What I will do now, I think, is I will go over this, tidy up the other bits and pieces, remove this with the knife, and then I'll come back to you and show you how you assemble the bow, which you also need to clean with his arm, um, into the socket. Okay. Okay, we're back. Now, we've done the clean-up. You can probably see that this part is quite shiny now because the mould line is gone and I've gone over that with my very fine um, sanding stick I've done a few other areas followed where the mould line would be and sorted out this piece on the bottom of the uh, base so that's nice and smooth and doesn't look like anything was cast there this has also been gone over I've um, given the bow a bit of a polish and um, sorted out a few bits and pieces there were a few little casting pips on the ends there so now we're ready to have a go and assemble this one is nice and easy Bobby Jackson has sculpted a nice floppy sort of cuff there which makes a wonderful socket for sticking the bow in and we know Mason is going to be firing somewhere along there now sometimes with a miniature it's easier to paint it paint this part as well let's get this back into shot and then assemble it. With this, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I'm going to stick him in now and then see where we go from there. Hopefully that'll work all right. But you see, there he is. He's, he's looking, looking, down his, looking down his sight now. That makes it look right. So anyway, test fit fits nicely. Standard Loctite super glue. You can get all sorts of super glues, but super glue for this sort of stuff is very good. Hold him up. Deposit a small droplet of super glue within the thing. You're supposed to tap that and it's meant to empty itself. 
you then get the bow and position it in and hold it there we go till it sets and there you go it's assembled now if you had a bigger miniature you would need to look into putting a pin in between the piece that you're joining and the other piece in order to help make a decent join and also if you had a big joint crack around here which does happen with a lot of um, larger castings well then you're going to be into using your green stuff filler which I've got, got there this stuff squirts out very fine you can pack it in you can also use regular green stuff um, brown stuff anything that fits in tightly and that you can put a little bit of sculpting to if you need to and basically that is about it that is how you assemble your miniature prior to starting painting so I hope you found this useful I hope it's um, answered a few questions and hopefully enlightened a few people I know it's probably going over an awful lot of old stuff for us old hands because we've been doing this for donkey's years um, but it does need to be said every so often because new people come into the hobby and they've got to learn so there's Mason Thorne Walden. He's, um, he's saying goodbye, ta-ta for now. This is Tim, who is also saying ta-ta for now. Unless you'd like to share the video or leave a nice comment or have got any ideas for future videos, please do. Um, failing that, you can catch me either here on the forum or at the shop. And if you have any comments or bits and pieces, please do let me know. Till the next one, cheerio!